We have officially entered bye week season of the fantasy football calendar, which means not only are you navigating another slew of star NFL injuries, you now have to figure out how you're going to replace Eagles, Chargers, Lions, and Titans in your lineup in week five. But don't worry, we've got your back because on today's episode of the Regression of the Mean podcast, we have 15 players on the week five waiver wire that will make your team better. I'm your host, Sean Moran, and it's a special edition of the waiver wire pod. Aiden's not here, but the man, the myth, the legend, Keegan Thompson, is joining me on a Monday afternoon. Keegan, so good to see you. You and I got started doing waiver wire episodes. It feels good getting you back in the saddle. How you doing today, man? Yeah, the first episode I think we ever recorded together was a, a waivers after week one of the, uh, what was it, 2022 season? Was that when it started? Yeah, 2022 season. So, so. Yeah, it's good yeah. to be back. Usually this is a reserve for Aiden and Sean, but I'm filling in for the our uh, other RTM member here as he travels to Austin, right? Yeah, he's in Austin for work. I think so. he is, yeah. He's eating Torchy's tacos today. Yeah, so. he's eating Torchy's on a Monday night, living my dream. I think that Enjoying Austin. some Mason Rudolph versus Tyler Huntley football. <laughs> hey, we're getting Goff and uh, we're getting Goff and Gino too on the other side of things. So yeah, we're yeah, we're recording this through Monday night football, like how our last two episodes we recorded during Thursday night football. You know, that's just uh, the nature of the beast. We're busy guys, but it just works uh, recording through the games. So if any key players stand out, key injuries happen, and we don't call them out from the Monday night game, that's why. But today's episode, pretty straightforward. We'll highlight key players out on buys this week. That's where we'll start. We'll then hit some of the key NFL injuries. And then after that, we've got 15 players on the waiver wire that we think you should prioritize. A good mix of receivers, running backs, tight ends, and quarterbacks. But before we do that, Keegan... I'm sure this is somebody's first time seeing our channel. YouTube recommended them. Maybe they've recommended them a couple times. They've clicked. They were interested. They watched a little bit. But they haven't decided to dip their toes all the way in and make the jump to join the mean team. What advice do you have for people that are discovering our channel for the first time today? Give it a shot. Give us an honest listen. Give it a chance. See how it makes you feel. Maybe we recommend a player that saves your season. Maybe we recommend a player that you weren't thinking of. Maybe we recommend a player that you were already thinking of and you needed some external validation outside of your own thoughts. Maybe all of those reasons happen. And maybe you just think, ah, these guys might know what they're talking about. But you're only going to do that if you sit down, you listen, you give us a couple minutes of your time, and you give the mean team a shot. And then maybe you, too, can be a loyal team member of the mean team. So toss us a like if you enjoy it. Drop a comment if you had a player that you wanted us to highlight and we did, or there was a player that you're thinking about and we highlighted and give us a sub. If you want to be back for more, we'll be out of doing waivers every week. We've got RB rankings later in the week, wide receiver rankings. We'll come at you with some buys and sells to keep you updated through the season and make sure your team's competitive, but you're only going to find out if you give us a shot. So that's all we ask. I get chills every time the man just ran through the entire calendar I mean, weekly calendar of the content we put out. Look, this is a good waiver wire episode to join. Bye weeks, and there's some stars on the wire this week. This is a good time to tap in. We're going to bring our a game. If you like what we put out there, hit the subscribe button. Join the mean team. All right, we're going to start things off with week five buys. Keegan, I play you this week in a league, and uh, you are a big Eagles guy. So no <laughs> Eagles uh, on your team this yeah. week. Four teams on a bye. We've got the Detroit Lions, Los Angeles Chargers, Philadelphia Eagles, and Tennessee Titans. That means no Jalen Hurts, Devonta Smith, A.J. Brown, Saquon Barkley, Jared Goff, Jabir Gibbs, Amon Ross St. Brown, Sam Laporta, Jameson Williams, J.K. Dobbins, Ladidi McConkey, <laughs> Quentin Johnson, Calvin Ridley, Tony Pollard, and DeAndre Hopkins. That's a lot of guys that you're playing in fantasy for the most part. I snuck in QJ. We love you, QJ. Yeah, uh, I like that. Did. No, that was a he nice little sneak in. in. Yeah, QJ made it in. But man, rough, rough uh, bye week. It's not going to be bye week hell like we have in week, let's see here, week 12, where we have six teams out on a bye. Thank you very much for that, uh, <laughs> Roger. And week 14, that's fun when you're trying to make the uh, fantasy playoffs. There are six teams on a bye. That's, that's fantastic stuff. Uh, so we have four teams on a bye. Pretty standard. Um, I'd say overall, you're probably going to be running to replace Jalen Hurts. So there's some good options there. You're probably looking to get through a couple of these wide receivers that are going to be out. Maybe Tony Pollard's out. So we got some options for you on the wire this week. Before we get there, though, we do have to cover some of our least favorite parts of this uh, this show. And 
And that's going through some of the biggest injuries that happened. So we're going to start first and foremost with something that rocked me harder than a lot of the hardships I faced in my life. I've been through a lot, guys. You know, if we ever sat down and had a beer and I, I told you a little bit about what I've been through, you'd be like, wow, this guy's and Keegan's been through a lot too. So like, you know, I'd be like, these guys are pretty cool down to earth. But man, what Rasheed Rice's torn ACL is doing to me right now is is tough. It is very tough to get through today. I was at the Niner game yesterday, the news breaks, and it was like um it was just like a free bingo square. You know, the free square where it was like, you're going to win a fantasy title. Here's your free square. And it was Rasheed Rice in the fifth round. And that's gone. Um, Poof. What the hell the are the of an eye. Yeah, it was gone. It's just gone. The, the advantage is race. Le- le- like, at least the teams I have Rice in, I stacked big advantages and basically didn't lose. So I'm like, okay, for the most part. But what are the Chiefs going to do to replace him, first and foremost, before we figure out how we're going to replace him in fantasy, Keegan? They've got to trade for somebody at this point. Like their wide receiver core was already down. Hollywood Brown, like Xavier Worthy, is obviously still not worthy of full time touches yet. yet, and he's definitely not earning anything yet. He might have to now. Kelsey's on the back end of his career. Like it, it wasn't a pretty wide receiver like pass catching group as is. I mean, Juju Smith Schuster is getting touchdown looks for them. So I, I think they have to trade for somebody. They're four and zero right now. And that's about as good as you could get. You know, that's perfect for where they're at. But minus Hollywood, minus Rashi Rice, like they need to make a real time buy on someone. You know, Christian Kirk, Amari Cooper, players of that nature. Maybe DeAndre Hopkins is a name I've seen thrown around. But they've got to go make their own buys and sell sheet (laughs) for the Kansas City Chiefs. I got to get this take off. I'm a Niner fan and Patrick Mahomes has caused me so much distress in my life. Um, he just has. And this year I leaned into the Chiefs being like, look, if you can't beat him, join him. I, do, I don't want him to win, but hey, I'm going to profit from their success. All he has done is hurt me because he's been terrible in fantasy football. And then he killed Rashi Rice. We'll get through it. Fantasy managers will get through it. But man, I made a comment <laughs> in our group chat about Pat injuring him. And it was like, no way you're blaming Pat for that. But it's like, what kind of tackle was that from Patrick Mahomes? You know? Pretty unathletic. And what's crazy is Rice stripped him too. Like it was a beautiful strip. And then he just destroys his knee. So Pat needs to figure it out Um, because, you know, he's already like the greatest quarterback of all time. And he needs me, some fantasy dork, to tell him how to figure it out. Uh, Next injury here, Malik Neighbors. Um, We can't have nice things. Concussion at the end of that game. Absurd usage for the man they call Leak. Injured Thursday. Plays on Sunday. Could have 10 days. So he could play against Seattle, but I don't know. Do you think he's going to play? I mean, that is kind of like a window to get back out there. But no. Yeah, I think um, last year, um, like concussions that occurred on Thursday, I don't think a single player missed the following week okay. with the 10-day break. So it's kind of a weird concussion, too. It was uh, you know self-inflicted by accident, but he just fell straight on his face. And, and I definitely think it was probably a minor concussion, but nonetheless enough to take him out like him straight to the locker room. So I think it'll be all right though. 10 days is way a, a long time in terms of NFL recovery from concussions. I'm not saying anybody who gets a concussion to go out and play contact sports 10 days later, but the NFL is a different piece. So yeah, I, I'm optimistic he plays, but who, who knows? Concussions are kind of hard to predict. Next one here, Jonathan Taylor. They're saying it's a mild high ankle sprain. Uh, he had his How high? On. How Didn't, high, Colt? Please it, tell me how high. It keeps getting higher. It keeps getting lower, actually, by the day um, from, yeah. from all the reporting. I watched an interview with him like on the field with Cameron Wolf after the game, and he seemed totally fine. It wasn't like a Kenneth Walker being like, I'm good. He was sitting there talking about the win, how much he enjoyed playing with Joe Flacco. Like, I, it, it was like, look, he may miss a game, but. It's not always guaranteed if you have a mild high ankle sprain. If you miss a game, he, he honestly seemed fine. So I don't I don't so know how they approach it. Are we shilling some Trey Sermon on the episode today? I'm not, but you know, if JT misses time, you probably should pick up Trey Sermon. But as a Niner fan, I can't consciously do that under any circumstance uh, with Trey Sermon. Um, Shanahan burned me too hard. Never again. Never again. I, I think <laughs> actually JT only misses one week if he misses time, but we shall see. Next injury here. Shocking news, Christian Watson is like <laughs> headed to the IR. Um, this it's it's a mean joke, but at least it wasn't a hamstring this time. It was a high ankle sprain, kind of a freak accident. He did not fracture his leg. That's the optimism, but it does look like a really bad high ankle sprain, like one of those ones that uh you actually go on IR and miss maybe four to six weeks. Um, this opens up the door to a player we're gonna talk about later in the episode. But Good time. I mean, I know this sounds terrible, but but 
this kind of solves a lot of our issues as fantasy um, analysts. Hopefully Christian Watson, the person gets better, but this does make this passing offense much more easy to predict with Watson out. So. Any other injuries, key injuries out of the fantasy world? Yeah, I've, I've got one more here. Um, Taysom Hill looks like he re-injured his abdomen after the thesis was playing out two rushing touchdowns. I thought he was going to do this all the time. I was like, wow, of course, after I drop him, he continues to do the thing I thought he would do. Um, but he re-injured his rib or abdomen. Uh, he had a bruised lung. And that's why he missed last week, and he came back and played. Not great. That and one the, will kill you. Yeah, <laughs> but. yeah, you got to be careful on that one. And then the last one I want to call out, um, he was kind of approaching an interesting ad territory, uh, Tyler Bidet. Uh, he had 70 rush yards, nine carries in week three. kind of looked like maybe he was gonna potentially going to take this lead back role uh, with Javante really struggling and McLaughlin weighing 118 pounds. Um, but he had a really scary back injury, uh, and he may land on IR. So... I know that's probably not super actionable. You saw this one in, in real time, though, because he was playing the Jets. Yeah, it was just a weird, like, uh, I don't want to call it freak accident, but I just think he fell, like, super odd. And the way his body was contorted as he was falling, like, it could have been, it looks very, like, spine, neck involved. Um, so mm. I hope he he recovers. But, yeah, I think the action item for, and I, by the way, he came out and said that his name was Bidet. And After, yeah, being called Batty Batty for a while. Beatty Batty is just so much better than being Tyler Bidet, but I hope Tyler Bidet gets better soon. But not that there's a backfield that we want much to do with, but similar to how um, we're talking about Christian Watson, just like clarity and less uh, less opportunities to be stolen from current running backs could be beneficial if you have investments in the Broncos' backfield. Yeah, I, it's rough. I don't really know what to do with that entire offense outside of Cortland Sutton continues to get a ton of targets. That's about it right now for the entire uh, Broncos offense. All right, moving into week five waiver wire, probably the biggest pickup of the season. I know it sounds a little hyperbolic, but no, I, dude, I do that was Isaiah I, likely after week one. Everybody knows. <sighs> Look, if Mark Andrews were to miss time, likely would be a top three play tight end. That's kind of my, my take there. I don't really know what happens with that passing offense, but what I do know is that when Tatavian Wicks is given 80% of the snaps, he's basically a superstar in fantasy football um, in terms of the usage, in terms of the production. I think you just have to make a super aggressive play here. He's available in a shit ton of fantasy leagues. He's only owned in 12%, according to Fantasy Pros. Um, I was looking, I always look on Sundays, Saturdays, I'm always looking at guys that have been dropped as like an option. And Detavian Wicks was staring me in the face. And I was like, eh, I've got Romeo <laughs> Dobbs. Eh. Maybe I pick up a backup running back, you know, playing that whole game. And Wicks was staring me right in the face. Year two breakout type candidate. Finally gets an opportunity to see a ton of snaps. Has 13 targets, five receptions, 78 yards, two touchdowns. Unbelievable usage for Wicks. Wide receiver two in expected fantasy points per game. Wide receiver three in production. You take a look at some of the underlying usage and stats. You take a look at the game logs for the Green Bay Packers. It just tells a dominant wide receiver story. 80% of the snaps, 29% of the targets. I mean, 29% tar targets per outrun, 26% of the targets, a 16.5 yard ADOT, 39% of the air yards. Some of the best usage you're going to see in fantasy football. Is that sustainable week over week? I don't know. This is somebody I would get ultra aggressive with on the wire. Your two guy looked really good as a rookie. Keegan, any thoughts on Wicks? Yeah, this is like the Red Seas parting for Wicks because in the preseason, we were trying to figure out who of these wide receivers would be most valuable. Like you were definitely in on the read stuff, but I was I was of the thought process that Romeo Dobbs would be the go-to guy in wide receiver or two wide receiver sets, and he still is. Like route yeah, participation, is. everything from Dobbs is very clear, but without Watson, you know, being in the lineup, like it clears the path for Dontavian Wicks, and I just like when he touched the ball, it's it's, it's something good always happens. So I think after um watson went out too like he only played one less snap than Jaden reed you know after watson left the game so like you said usage was great like this could be a multi-week injury and this is a very good passing offense it was good when malik wills was in it's even better when jordan love plays like this is not somebody that you want to let slip to your league mates i would definitely get aggressive on some dontavian wicks bids 30 to 60 percent 
wide range, but depending how desperate you are, you just lost Rasheed Rice. I, I, I wouldn't blame you if you dropped over 50% of your fab on Dentavia Wicks. This is why you save some of it. I know yeah. with, early in the season, there's sometimes there's there's bids you need to make that you feel like are going to help right the ship right after week one, but you always got to put a little couple bullets in the chamber when you need them. It's a long season. I will say, if you miss out on Wicks, Josh Downs is an excellent consolation prize. Keegan, you are a resident Josh Downs fan, fanboy, president of the fan club. I don't know how you want to... Yeah, what he might be my. I've been Josh actually Downs. thinking about who I replaced T Higgins with in my Twitter bio. Like, if you follow me on Twitter for a long time, <laughs> it was the president of the Mike Evans fan club, but he doesn't need representation um, from me. So I, I had moved over to T Higgins, and well, T Higgins burning me, and I think Josh Downs might be my next guy that I am willing to start a fan club over. Like, what a wide receiver! Um, I, people. I try to call this out preseason as like a, a sleeper um, going into the year. It was a lot of positive coach talk and coach speak on Josh Downs and like how they want to use him in the offense. And he's just, I think he fits perfectly into what they would like to do. As you could see with uh, Joe Flacco, how that offense looks when Flacco was in and how Gardner was in. And it's not perfect run out when a rich plays, but I mean, 18 and a half, almost 18 and a half, half PPR points and 22 PPR points this week, eight receptions on nine targets. 82 yards receiving, had a touchdown. There's only two players ahead of him in the NFL that rank higher in first three target share. It's Cooper Cup and Malik Neighbors. 37.8% first three target share. Love that. Like I mentioned, he got a big boost from Joe Flacco playing. Like I think just who Joe Flacco is at this point in his career and the type of football they want to play with him was better suited for Josh Downs game. But I am hoping and assuming that even when A. Rich comes back, this continues from Downs. You know, this is the exact kind of wide receiver that you want in an offense to help your quarterback build consistent plays and consistent games, like stacking good plays that are not the deep balls or the hero shots. When you have somebody like Josh Downs, who's so versatile, like coming out of the slot, he can also be up out wide. He can run a number of routes at like very high success rates. He's a perfect best friend for a quarterback, especially somebody like Richardson, who I think just needs to dumb it down a little bit, like simplify his game. And Josh Downs is a wonderful wide receiver to do that. Um, but I was stoked to see the production. Yeah, that whip route he ran in the end zone was freaking sick. Um, Steichen just scheming it up like Steichen does. Uh, I will say Richardson looked awesome before he got hurt. His his foot, uh, his feet, his footwork looked much better. That's been the issue with Richardson this year is the foot, the feet have been all over the place. Uh, he threw an absolute laser to Pittman 32 yards down the field. He looked like he was on his way to a big day. Um, they scored 14 points in the drives with Richardson, and Flacco was fine. Uh, he, he was able to get the ball to the receivers. I don't think Richardson misses any time. If he does, though, Downs is kind of a must start with Flacco because we know we're going to get there. But I definitely do think Richardson's progressing. So I, I'm excited yeah. to see Richardson with Downs, and Richardson loves Downs um, consistently since since they played together. Or they played together, I think, for now call it like five full games and it's been pretty consistent how many targets he's gotten from Richardson. And I mean, the usage is insane, dude. 36%, um, 36% targets per route run, 32% of the targets. Like his usage has been nuts. You, you want Josh Downs. He's a really great valuable player price. in terms of earning first downs too. Like he's a top 12 player in that metric, you know, first down for route run percentage. Yeah. Like he's just a good football player. That's Correct. what moves the, that's what moves the chains quite literally it moves the needle for an offense is players like Josh Downs. So even if a rich is playing, I'm still spending fab to acquire a wide receiver. That is his relationship with his quarterbacks only to get better. And like, I love Anthony Richardson. He's only going to improve as the year goes on. And I don't want to miss out on a wide receiver. That's, you know, tag team with Anthony Richardson, 20 to 30% on Josh Downs. Um, I feel pretty confident about that. Now let's talk about you, probably your Scandale. favorite waiver wire pickup. Yeah, the exact the opposite of Josh Downs. Everything we said about being a good, useful football player, just throw that out the window because it ain't <laughs> going to be pretty with Wandell. But man, it's going to be awesome. Uh, Any time that you can go get a wide receiver who gets twelve targets, eight targets, and fourteen targets in games, um, and turns those into like sixty-eight yards <laughs> in full point PPR, uh, you're going to do that and do that. Every single time. I'm sorry. It's not pretty. It's Is it sustainable? I don't know. Does it really matter? I don't really care because Wandale is kind of a godsend if you have injuries right now or bye weeks because you're looking at someone who's getting 28% of the targets, has 30% targets per route run, 
as like a super mini a dot that Daniel Jones is fully capable of getting the ball to. And he's kind of nice at breaking some tackles. You know, I'll give Wandale that. You get the ball space, you can break some tackles. He's basically just an extension of their run game. He, you know, they yeah, throw that's him the a ball, good way to put four it. Four yards, like it's just an extension of their run game, and it's kind of funny. Should a good offense utilize Wandale Robinson this much? No. Does it really matter? Not really. Uh, yeah, the, the we're playing a different game here, and that's PPR yeah. fantasy football. And, yes. and what matters yes. is is Wandale putting up PPR points in your lineup. Yes. That that because that's happening. So. Um, I want Wandale in all my leagues. Uh, I wouldn't get super aggressive though. Cause I don't think you need to, no one's getting super excited about Wandale Robinson. I've got him at like 10 to 20% fit, uh, fab bid, but man, he, he's a really reliable guy you can put in your lineup right now. Oh, he's cleared over 9.8 fantasy points in every game, cleared over 11 and three out of four. Like you're going to take that for a bye week fill in and an injury fill in. Oh Wandale. yeah. Next guy here, though, um, he's a little bit more exciting. We always kind of like that mystery box to an extent or a rookie who is a giant human being that can run super fast. And especially when he's, you know, saddling up on Dollar Bill, his uh, his horse. <laughs> uh, and that is none other than Xavier Leggett, who kind of had his breakout game. Six for 66 and a tutty and 10 targets with this new Andy Dalton, Dave Canales, Panthers passing attack. How are you approaching Leggett on the wire this week, Aiden? I mean, I mean, Keegan. Wow. Yeah, don't That's, worry. You've recorded whoa. enough episodes with him. I, I get wow. it. It's just like, it's right quick. You're like, oh, I'm recording with Aiden. How is he approaching? <laughs> no, I'm uh, I'm definitely putting out some healthy bids for Xavier Leggett. If, yeah. if you're not stashing him already. I mean, the narrative for Xavier Leggett when they were like, what's it going to be like to play with Andy Dalton? You know, when the news broke, he's like, well, me and him got a bunch of second team reps in the summer. So they already had some rapport through training camp and practice. I mean, he was basically catching all Andy Dalton's balls, but. The offense just looks so much better with him, um, but truly a breakout game, like 25% target share, 661 and a touchdown on 10 targets, 87% snap share in week four, too. And he also had two rushing attempts, which is really cool to see. I mean, this is a dynamic wide receiver who I don't want to use the Debo comp because it feels lazy, South Carolina, but this is a guy who is still coming into his own as a wide receiver, but he's a bully with the ball in his hands and he's somebody that's such a big target. Um, Great little route and play also on his touchdown. Like being a red zone threat is really big for Xavier Leggett's yeah. production and fantasy. Um, so all good signs pointing to somebody that I, I want to pick up on my team for sure. Yeah, and with with Thielen on the IR, you're going to get routes. So if you go get Leggett, you're getting 88% of the routes and 24% of the targets, which you love to see. And rookies tend to come on strong towards the back half of the year. And Oh, yeah. Adam Schefter had an interesting comment basically saying Deontay Johnson's one and done in Carolina. I don't know how true that is, but you know, I did see that. And if for like oh, some yeah, reason the Chiefs comment. if the Chiefs come out super aggressive and offer like a second round pick to the Panthers for Deontay Johnson, I mean League at would be awesome. Like that that would be that'd be freaking sick. You'd basically have this wide receiver one out of nowhere, and then you know, any DJ truther is just, you know, gonna be levitating. So um, I, I think that'd be pretty sweet, all things considered. But overall, I think Leggett is a ton of solid base value as it is right now with contingency upside. So I, I'm at 15 to 20 percent on Leggett. Are, are you more aggressive there with him? No, I don't know if you need to be that aggressive because like the, you have to remember of all the rookie wide receivers, like this is the one that needed the most work, you know, at the NFL level, had the latest breakout. So there's still going to be some growing pains with Xavier Leggett. And I, I would probably... Be starting him next week, though, if you had like the, the Smitty, the AJ Browns of the world, maybe you had oh, Lad yeah. McConkey. Like, there's a lot of like good wide receivers on by next week. So, I think he's a, I think he's an ad. Um, we got two more guys here that we're looking to add very quickly Jordan Whittington, uh, the rookie wide receiver out of Texas, uh, six round guy playing for the Rams. Uh, he was somebody we highlighted a couple of times since Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua got hurt, but in week four, he became a full time player. Scored 12.2 fantasy points. And what's super interesting from a usage perspective is he basically had the second best usage of any wide receiver on the Rams this year that is not Cooper Cup. So we've been kind of waiting for a big game. And what we saw from Whittington is, uh, I'd say, pretty impressive here. 97% of the routes, 26% targets per out run, 30% of the targets, 29% of the air yards. This is pretty elite stuff. Now, it's been changing week in and week out since Cup got hurt. The week before, it was 2-2 season. I don't really know what's going on now here, but I mean, 
I don't know. How, how are you approaching Whittington? I'm at like five, ten percent. I wouldn't get too aggressive, but he's definitely interesting because he was great in the preseason and the usage is there. Yeah, I would say if you were one of the like Demarcus Robinson or Tyler Johnson waiver people that you know immediately uh, picking those up after the Puka and Cooper Cup injuries, like I would replace Whittington straight up with those guys. Like this would be my long term solution to the Rams passing attack. Now we do think Cooper Cup's going to come back, but. I mean, Whittington, and I know preseason doesn't matter as much anymore, but Whittington was one of the best players, not just on the Rams in the preseason. Like, Whittington was one of the best preseason football players in the NFL this year. I mean, he's obviously got something to his game, but this is my my pick for the long-term stash, somebody I would like like to have on my bench from the Rams passing attack. I mean, look at those, you know, snapshot numbers and everything they've got pulled up. Like, that's that's really good usage for a wide receiver you can pick up on the waivers. This shocked me how good Trey Tucker's been. <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, I don't like this. I, again, I'm kind of blown away. Um, Year two. I, I did not see this coming. I, I didn't. Um, I, do you have any thoughts on Trey Tucker before we highlight some of this usage? Because it's, it's pretty impressive, all things considered. No, no thoughts. Like I, I'm pretty like stuck in the, you know, Jacoby Myers is the guy you want to have and you probably drafted him and he's not available. And also... Devontae Adams, if he gets traded, then we can talk more seriously about Trey Tucker about increasing that bid. But right now, it's kind of like, I don't know, hope seems like flash in the pan, but I could be totally wrong. Yeah, I mean, 5 to 10% for both Whittington and Trey Tucker. I will say, though, back-to-back weeks, over 87% of the routes, 23% targets per outrun, 23% of the targets. dot bouncing around. He's getting used as a running back on certain plays. He's cleared 15.4 fantasy points in back-to-back weeks. And he's had an, a better first read target share over the past two weeks than Jamar Chase, CeeDee Lamb, and Mike Evans. 27% <laughs> first read target share. Small sample size theater. I know. He's got his next six games against the Broncos, Steelers, Rams, Chiefs, Bengals, and Dolphins. There's some there's some gettable weeks there. And again, if Devontae Adams leaves, this guy's now shown that he's kind of good. Um, at least good enough to get schemed up plays, which is always intriguing. Stuff that we want. And um, he's a burner. Like he can win downfield. So I think he's a big play guy. It's actually showing some chops. So I wouldn't get super aggressive. Like if you're doing really well and you're looking for that kind of stash, you miss out on wicks, miss out on downs, miss out on league yet. I think he's a nice little consolation prize, all things considered. Depending on how serious your league is, Trey Sucker could be a guy that you wake up waivers or if you're like me, you stay up until 12 and they run, like you might be able to scoop him for free. So like don't blow your fab bag on Trey Tucker, but he could be like a, a leftovers guy at wide receiver. That would be worth an ad got an open bench spot yeah you're probably playing in a pretty intense league if people are fighting over trey tucker but <laughs> or like me where i play with a bunch of raiders fans so whenever i go look it's like he's gone because all the raiders fans pick him up and i'm like that's that's tragic i kind of want in on this uh trey tucker uh tucker experience as a year two <laughs> receiver um really quickly justice hill i think he needs to be owned i wouldn't get too crazy in terms of fad bit fab bids but he's got top 35 expected fantasy points per game usage via fantasy points he's got top 30 production he's clearly a big part of this offense you know he tore his achilles two or three years ago he looks all the way back he looks explosive he looks fantastic he's an excellent compliment to king henry i think he has decent flex appeal all things considered if you were in a pinch and you just needed to play a running back but i also think he's got pretty decent contingency upside if anything were to happen to king henry now, again, do I think he'd handle 100% of the running back? No, of course not. It'd be a committee. But can you name the third running back for the Ravens right now? No, because the other two that were supposed to have that spot are both injured. Keaton Mitchell and Rasheen Ali are both injured. So I couldn't even tell you who the third one is right now. Well, trick question, there isn't. <laughs> it's just them. <laughs> Literally just them. And Patrick Ricard's technically the other guy. Like, yep. the fullback. So... I mean, this is a great offense you want to be a part of. Hill's usage is totally fine. He's averaging 11 fantasy points per game. It's not sexy. I think you pay up if you're a, if you're a Henry owner. But again, 10 to 15% on Justice Hill, why not? He looks good. He looks explosive. Not many running backs look that good right now. I'd be down to take a chance on him. Um, would you get aggressive yeah. at all, even if you don't have Henry? Not aggressive, but a couple bucks, especially if you need a, a running back to spot start. But two plus catches in every game so far is is pretty encouraging. And their passing attack is just so 
there's nothing deep to it right now, like minus a couple shots here and there. And it's proving to be a really good outlet for uh, Lamar Jackson. And he kind of keeps that offense humming when they need a big play. He's there. So it's a good person's yeah. dash on the bench. All right. Um, you love Tank Bigsby. You've been a big <laughs> Tank guy for a couple years. I got to capitulate. He looks awesome. He really does look like a good running back. Uh, he's yeah, this is the best the he's looked in his career for sure. And ETN is just having a weird year. He was leaving game with shoulder injuries. He's fumbling. He's like averaging over five yards per carry. Something like it's not like playing bad. It's just a weird Travis ETN year where the usage is fine, but the points aren't good. And you got over here Tank Bigsby rushing for eight yards per carry this year. Like, do yeah, you, Tank, like, tank you is definitely. Uh, I think he's more of a stash than anything. Like, you're if if anything happens to ETN, it's obviously great, but. The problem is most of us are playing in half PPR leagues or PPR leagues like and he did have 90 yards, but, you know, over 50 percent of those came on a 58 yard rush. Um, so it was great. And he does look good as a runner. Did have two coal line carries against the Texans, but no touchdown. But he also had no targets in the game. Right. He's got a nice role. He's adding some juice, but he's not really doing much for you in the PPR world. It's got a touchdown or bust for Travis, uh, Tank Bigsby, but yeah, I would be stashing. He, I am stashing he, in a couple. He's days. a stash. Yeah, he's a stash. What, like 5, 10%, 15%? Like, wh- how are you approaching baseball? I would go less than 10, probably. Okay. All right. This guy, I don't think is a stash. I think this guy might be a usable player week in and week out. And, that, and that's Alexander Madison. Um, it's coming, dude. Like, Samir White's been so bad. It, it, like, he's still out snapping Madison. But Madison is scoring twice as many fantasy points per game. Ten to, to Zamir White's five. Like at some point. That's so bad. At some point, Pierce is going to give up on White, right? And, and Madison's going to start seeing 60% of the snaps. And when that happens on bye weeks, I think he's a low-end running back too. I know that's not great. We're not the biggest fans of Alexander Madison on this podcast. But again, it, it is so bad. He's the wide receiver. I mean, he's the running back 26 right now in PPR, by the way. Four. That's so uh, yeah. bad. I drafted a decent amount of him best ball too, which is kind of random. But I mean, it, like again, he's still getting out snapped. He's only seeing 40% of the snaps to Zamir White's 47. So you have to imagine that that's going to flip soon, right? You would like to think so. Yeah, I just don't think White's a very good running back. Madison's definitely adding much more juice to the offense. And Pierce is a big like ride the hot hand like who shows up every week guy so madison's showing up every week that's crazy he had alexander madison adds more juice to the offense Oof. Um, yep 10 to 15 percent on madison i think it's worth it like, zamir white good. truthers this offseason were Rough. sick and delusional it was the most screaming zero rb running back ever like it, uh, i mean you were drafting him ahead of Jerome Ford. Like, what are we? This doing is here? worse than the Mike Davis run out from a few years ago. I just think it's nothing will top the Mike Davis run out though, because people <laughs> were like, "That's my league winner in the fifth round." Um, yeah, no, yeah. people were calling Zamir White a league winner, but this is like Mike Davis uh, adjacent for sure. It's definitely in that neighborhood. Um, this one's a bit a little bittersweet for me because in the off season, I basically said that Bijan Robinson is is Jameer Gibbs. Like I've just been saying this for a while now. He's in a split backfield. He's this, he's that. And they ended up drafting him eighth overall in the big money league that we all play in. So I've just been like, ah, no, Algiers dust. And then this is the week where it's like, hey, actually, Bijan isn't separating. And Tyler Algier is a really good player. And we should just play him too. Um, And here we are recommending Tyler Algier as a standalone acquisition player in our waiver wire episode. You've been a big Algier guy from the jump. This is the first week where it went from an 80 20 split for Bijan to Algier to a 60 40. Bijan had a big touchdown run called back. I think people are overreacting, but Algier has to be owned, especially if you have Robinson. Like he needs to be on your bench, but he might carve up more of a role. How are you approaching Algier as like a big Algier fan, Keegan? You just have to understand that we had this conversation in a group chat where somebody was like, why does Algier get run? It's like, because Algier is a good running back. Yes. He was a thousand yard rusher as a rookie. Like you don't just do that for chance. Some people fall into a thousand yards, but not many. Like Algier is actually a good NFL running back. Is he a perfect fantasy asset? Not always, but he's obviously going to have a role because he's good. <laughs> he's just good. 
He also got two targets, two catches. That's not what Bijan is going to do. But he had 20 yards, like receiving 60 yards on eight attempts. He's also a really good short yardage back. So that's bad news for Bijan goal line touches or inside the five runs. Like Tyler Algier will continue to be involved in their red zone scoring opportunities. They do like to pass the ball a bit in the red zone, which is a problem for both Bijan and Algier. But you just can't sit there and ignore that every week his snap percentage is increasing. Like every week he gets more involved in the offense. And it's nothing against Bijan. It's just like smart coaches and good offenses get everybody involved that can move the ball forward. We would love Bijan to get 90% of the workload, but that's just not going to work for the Falcons. Algier has to have some type of role, and they're making it very clear to us that he is. I mean, look at that. You can go down this chart and just see how much it changes for 60, Algier. 40. Yep, 60-40. I mean, and they win 18, too. 22, 21, and then boom, 41%. Is it Thank game you. environment? Is it that specific opponent? I don't know, but that's a large enough jump where Algier needs to be on your radar. And if you're a Bijan owner and you're not stashing Algier, like you're really hurting yourself. Yeah, I've got him on the bench in uh in the league that I have him. It's just uh it's a no brainer, all things considered. Um ten to fifteen percent Algier. Um I don't think you're starting him, but again, if Bijan goes down, it's like a top twelve guy. He uh, he would go off, all things considered. Can't believe we're here. But within two weeks, uh, Kareem Hunt has completely established himself as the best player in this backfield. It is kind of predictable. Like the funniest outcome seems to always happen. And uh, the man who had the quickest photoshops in Chiefs history is. Um, <laughs> hey, check out looking, my Photoshop. How, how does it look? He's already back to averaging five yards per carry on the Chiefs, which is just hilarious. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just... a lowly three, like less than three yards per carry on the Browns. And boom, all of a sudden, five yards per carry. Yeah, man, that happened quick. Carson Steele fumbles, and then Kareem Hunt in week four, 43% of the snaps, 58% of the rushing attempts, 32% of the routes, 8% of the targets, 18% targets per outrun. He's just going to take this backfield. They don't want to give P. Ryan rushes. I mean, they did give him a goal line rush. But that was so don't... bad if you like were – if there was a lot of people who were ahead of this Kareem Hunt stuff, and I think it's still crazy that he's not owned like to 60 70% yet. But you were probably tilting so bad if you're a Kareem Hunt owner and you're seeing him get all the usage. And then P. Ryan's like second touch is the goal line look for a vulture on Hunt. But that will not continue. Like Kareem Hunt will be getting those touches moving forward. Yeah, 10.5 fantasy points. Uh, I, I kind of feel like I'd bid up on Kareem Hunt more than a lot of guys. I, I He might actually be my number one running back this week. If I... <laughs> I mean, it sounds dumb because he's been to dust ball for two years, but like, Sometimes yeah, I mean, the, I don't know, man. 20%? I think there's a couple running backs out there that are still like above, right above 50, almost 60 that you need to be paying attention to. Like, make sure you're like Bucky Irving's not available, Rico Dowdle, Braylon Allen, Chase Brown. I know he's higher owned, but like, then it's it like, gets to Kareem Hunt, and I'm like, that's probably the next best ad. And I know we kind of glossed over this, but if Jonathan Taylor does miss, I just want to say this while we're on the topic of running backs. So Jonathan yeah. Taylor misses more than one week and it says he's going to be out for one to two or two to three weeks. Like you need to pick up Trey Sermon. I like I would I would consider Trey and Kareem Hunt like probably my two biggest pickups out of the running back position this week. I just need to check my bias at the door. I can't I can't <laughs> remove it. I just I can't make that. You're right, but I just can't do it. As a Niner fan, I just can't do it. I just can't get there. Madison's like up there to Roshan Johnson. Um, I, I yeah, think you guys Rojo. Kind of talked about him last week, but the Rojo thing was hilarious because he was supposed to get what's his name was supposed to get benched, and uh, then he, he has his best fantasy benched. outing in like years. Of course, when I play DeAndre Swift in a league, I just get absolutely boat raced because of DeAndre Swift. Like that's that's sweet. <laughs> um. A guy we've been super hyped on for a long time, or at least I have, is, is Tucker Craft. And yeah, you've been on this. You've been on Tucker Craft tight end one for quite some time. I'm a Week big four, Tucker, we might be here. I'm a big Tucker Craft guy. And again, I don't like I understand Christian Watson got hurt, and that's a bummer. And I wish nothing but the best for him in his career. But in terms of fantasy football, Watson getting hurt just consolidates everything. It's very clear. Tucker Craft's the tight end. Jaden Reed's in the slot. Dobbs and Wicks are on the outside. It's very predictable, and all four of those guys are good. And all four of those guys are startable in fantasy. I don't know if you're getting spike weeks from all of them, but I'd feel comfortable playing all four of those guys. And when you take a look at what Tucker Craft did in week four, 
the usage was fantastic. He was, of course, tight end one for the week. He ran 86% of the routes, 15% targets per outrun, 14% of the targets. I mean, he's really good at breaking tackles. He had an octopus. You're picking up anyone who scores an octopus, right? Which is a touchdown yeah. plus the two point. And um, your two tight ends break out. That's just, they've done that for a long time, especially the good ones. I think he's one of the good ones. So Yeah, like you could do Kraft. so much worse at the tight end position. I mean, I'm not going to tell you to drop Mark Andrews and pick up Tucker Kraft, but I am going to tell you that if you have Mark Andrews, you should probably have Tucker Kraft on the bench so you can start him instead. Yeah. I, the, while we're on the topic of Andrews, if he played any other position than, um, than tight end, tight end, I think you could drop him. But it's like, what? Oh no, he scored zero points. Cole Komet scored six. Like what? What? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. The difference in tight end point scoring this year is so marginal. Like I know people want to get like in a fuss that Travis Kelsey's had some like less than five point games. Mark Andrews dropped a zero bomb. It hasn't mattered. Laporta, McBride, like. All of the good ones. It's not just Andrews. I feel like there's more outrage for Mark Andrews because they thought it was going to be more of a condensed passing attack. But look, everybody at the tight end position is playing poorly. Straight up. that That's just the nature of the beast. And I, again, it's Mark Andrews. Turns out when you break your leg and get into a super serious car accident in a 12-month span, you don't look like yourself right away. So I'm not yeah. giving out hope. And if someone drops Mark Andrews, I'm fucking picking his ass up. <laughs> that's for damn certain. Um, that's where I'm at with Mark Andrews. Uh, quickly, Eric All. This is a super deep cut. We could have gone with probably some little bit more name brand. This is a getting in front of the sticks uh, type recommendation. Eric All is the rookie tight end out of Iowa playing for the Cincinnati Bengals. Each and every week that Eric All has played, he has seen a uptick in production in terms of snaps. He has cleared over six fantasy points in three games in a row. He's still battling for snaps against Mike Gusecki, who's a halftime player. But Eric All is showing a ton of promise as a rookie in terms of being able to get targets, which is pretty rare for rookie tight ends. I don't know how comfortable you're going to feel starting Eric All in the lineup, but I definitely do think he's an interesting stash. Do you have any opinions on Eric All, Keegan? No, no opinions on Eric All, but I, I do like to call out that, like we said, the tight end position is such a mess. I would be remiss if I didn't take an opportunity on my first waiver show no. in a very long time to bring up my guy, Cade Otten. <laughs> I sent Sean over a list of waiver guys I thought, and I, he conveniently it. left out Cade Otten on <laughs> the list. When he sent it over, he's like, here's the final list I have. But look. First couple weeks for Cade wasn't great. Just a one scrimmage yard and two touches through two weeks. But back-to-back -back weeks with some really good production. Seven receptions on eight targets in week three for 47 yards. And then Damn. last week, six oh, receptions or six uh, receptions on nine targets for 52 yards in week four. I mean, hey, Jalen McMillan's getting a little banged up. They do desperately need a third option outside of Godwin and Mike Evans. That's Kate Otten, brother. I just had to take my opportunity to bring him up because that's how, I that's how it all started. 17 targets over the last two weeks. That that is yeah. new. That is a new development to me. I'll 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 give you that. 17 targets <laughs> is fucking crazy. Um I'll I'll give you that. Okay. Uh, um very quickly, we got two quarterbacks we got to call out here. Um, I'd say if you need a quarterback, this is probably the number one. Um, priority you had, and that's Justin Fields. Uh, he's the QB six. He had his first true breakout game. He threw for 300 yards and rushed for two touchdowns. Uh, Fields looks awesome. They did not lose that game because of him. Uh, his receiver and George, I mean, George Pickens is quite good. His tight end one, Pat Fryermuth, pretty solid tight end. They got the weapons. They're not going to be running the ball on every down in a lot of these games. We finally saw their defense let up. He probably has to throw it again against Dallas. Probably has to throw it against Las Vegas. I mean, talk about the perfect Jalen Hurts replacement. Don't but, worry, Sean. Uh, I pre-picked up Justin Fields for oh, I know. our Week Five matchup, so oh, I, know. I was I already saw I was it. ready to go. I already saw it. I already saw it. Um, I was all over that. Was, why do you think I called that out? Um, he's a good <laughs> replacement for Jared Goff. Shit, I would I wouldn't even start Jared Goff. I'd start Justin Fields. If you have Anthony Richardson, go pick up Justin Fields. Like, fuck, I might just play Justin Fields at this point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I but you know me, I love Justin Fields as a fantasy player, and he's like actually like playing good football too. Like that, that's a no brainer in my opinion uh, for Fields. The last guy I got here is the Red Rifle, that is Andy Dalton. Um, back to back twenty point games. I mean, no, he's at fifteen points in Week Four. 
24 points in week three. I thought he had a 30 bomb. I, I was maybe looking at a 4.5 point passing touchdown league or something. But Yeah, maybe different he, scoring. But he, he's this is great. still good production that you can get off the waiver wire at the quarterback position. I, I think Andy Dalton's definitely good at I mean, look, we highlighted Xavier Leggett. Deontay Johnson's been feasting, you know. That's a good one. I don't know that Richardson is going to miss week five, but maybe so. a Joe Flacco spot start. Um, I'm trying to think of some other quick hit quarterbacks while we're on the position as well. I mean, Darnold, too, but... if Darnold's out there, but I, oh, I mean, he's, he's Darnold should be up. rostered. Yeah, he's got yeah. scooped up. Yeah. I mean, at this point, um, you have to, I mean, Gino, I don't know if Gino's owned in a ton of leagues. Um, he's been pretty solid through, through the first month of the season. I, I think I'd still probably rather, I mean, him or the Dal- him or Dalton's like the same thing, honestly. Um, at this point, I, I think Fields is just a no brainer is a Konami code guy. Yep. But that's it, man. 15 waiver wire targets. Um, I feel better about Rashi. Honestly, I've now looked at all my options. I'm going to try my best to replace him. I feel better. I talked through it and, um, I'm excited, dude. I'm excited. And the Seahawks are losing. This is awesome. <laughs> the Seahawks are losing. This is like Christmas. Uh, I can't wait to share with the listeners uh, when we do rankings this week how big your Dontavian Wicks bid was. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how I'm going to play it quite yet. Um, <laughs> but we shall see. We shall see, sir. Um, thank you, Keegan, for hopping on the pod today, as always. And um, again, new to the show and you like it subscribe. We appreciate you. Till next time.